Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. More than 3,000 people have been displaced from their homes in Kauri community of Niger State by Boko Haram. Governor Abdu Abubakar Bello confirmed this news man and said Boko Haram has already hoisted its flag on the community. This comes in the middle of renewed onslaught by the terror group that has been in operation for 12 years. The displaced persons will swell the number of internally displaced persons in Nigeria, which the United Nations says is more than 2.1 million. Public Affairs Analyst Bolaba is joining us to talk about this. Good morning, Mr. Bolaba. Good morning. The Always a pleasure to be on your set. Yes. Thanks for joining us. So we see that the refugee IDP situation in Nigeria is going into about its seventh year. You know, the United Nations estimates that there are 2.1 million, you know, internet refugees in Nigeria, over 778,000 IDPs, you know, in Chad, Cameroon, and Niger, over 2.1 million internally displaced in Nigeria. How do you assess the situation, seeing that Nigerians in their own country are not safe? How do I assess the situation like any other like any other same Nigeria, I feel very bad about it. And to be honest with you, the vulnerability of these people speaks to the fact that the relative security and the relative, uh, the relative safety that I may think I have may be as vulnerable as theirs, especially if one looks at the global picture. So like any other reasonable human being who is who is unfortunate enough to to see how humanity is being subjected to a form of degradation you must also at some point think through the circumstances and see how you also may be as vulnerable or as susceptible to the factors that the, the, to the factors that may have led those people into the cold desert they are in. That is my feeling this morning. All right, so let's then also look deeper into the factors uh, that have uh, led us to have this increasing number of IDPs uh, across Nigeria. Um, the government, uh, you know, earlier had described the issues of security and uh, Boko Haram as the last kick of a dying horse and some of all those, you know, similar statements. Um, but if we have these numbers increasing, um, does this in any way show that we have, you know, failed as a country with protecting Nigerian lives and property? Oh, essentially, there are no two ways about it, and there is no point romanticizing failure. Uh, the fact, like uh, like that Latin Latin legal word says, uh, you know. Uh, the facts speak for themselves. Uh, the fact as we speak now is that the, situa the security situation in Nigeria is fast deteriorating. Fast deteriorating not only because uh, we have a commander in sleep. Oh, sorry. I, I wanted to say commander in chief. But it's obvious that the president seems to be sleeping on duty. And so, once the criminal elements, the terroristic elements, once they have uh, concluded that we, we more than have a commander in sleep, that the commander in chief, uh, they just go in pizza. They go in pizza. Uh, apart from the fact that we don't see an ostensible, ostensible form of leadership that ought to be in place, especially the nation as plagued and ravaged by insecurity as Nigeria, we also have the unfortunate situation where are those, the heroes who have committed voluntarily to secure us, you know, members of our armed services, members of our police force, members of our paramilitary organizations, these are heroes. Who, who voluntarily have subscribed to the idea of protecting us, their welfare, 
as we speak is nothing to, to speak highly of. Their degree of equipment, the degree to which they've been equipped, is far below, far below what ought to be. And these heroes are literally losing their lives as if they are lower animals. And we don't see a leadership that is, that is, uh, empathetic enough with their circumstance. So the criminal elements, you know, across the nation, the criminal elements are going to town to take on civility and take on civilization. <laughs> so that's, that's, that, that's the most unfortunate part of it. The most unfortunate part of it is that we have a, we have a leader. You know, Nigerians, Nigerians die in their, in their dozens. And the best you get from this presidency is a spokesperson trying to tell Nigerians that the president is concerned. Hmm. Nigerians, they die in their dozens, in their dozens. And the best you get from this leadership is a spokesperson mouthing sympathy and empathy on behalf of the president. It's, and you know what? The reality of our sub-regional situation now is such that in the, in the backdrop of the demise of Idris Derby Itno, the former, the former dictator of Chad, <laughs> whose role, whose role in, in, in symphony with France has kept a degree of stability from Burkina Faso to Mali to Niger to Chad, even to some other Central African uh, uh, to Central African Republic to some other Central African countries, in the backdrop of his unfortunate demise, not that I wanted a dictator to to be riding roughshod over his over his citizens, but in the backdrop of his demise, Nigeria ain't seen nothing yet. At the degree of vulnerability will be higher. And I dare say that some criminal elements between Boko Haram, Iswas, and some other, some other extreme groups, on the one hand, the criminal elements will now have little or no opposition to literally seep down the Nigerian territorial boundaries and we may be seeing more internally displaced persons than we've seen in recent times, bad as those ones are. All right. Uh, one big question, really, on the minds of many is this, you know. These IDPs, about 3,000 of them now displaced, you know, from Niger states, many more undocumented, you know, fleeing from their villages because of this, you know, insecurity challenges. Where will they go? Is this something that will basically worsen the IDP crisis, where you see Nigerians running to Niger and other neighboring countries? Or should we be expecting an influx you know, from these northern states to the southern states? And you know, the fact that it's just going to worsen the unemployment and security challenges in you know, places that, are seem, that, that are seem to be you know, more greener, like Lagos. So where will these IDPs go? Thank you. Thank you very much for your standing professionalism and helping me to connect the dots so that those of us who delusionally live in major cities where there still seems to be, uh, uh, to be uh, some, some form of stability can wake up. Yesterday, in a job, Yesterday in a job, Iyanoba specifically, by last week, hundreds of vehicular, vehicular assets of innocent people were vandalized. You know why? Because there was a confrontation between many of, many of these Okada riders and the local folks. And you want me to shock you 
Many of those Okada riders, many of those who ride Okadas in Lagos come from as far as Okina Faso, Mali, Niger, Chad, and some other uh, internally displaced areas, internally displaced areas of Nigeria. You know, the common language that bonds them together is the fact that the lingua franca of the vast area from whence they came is Hausa. So people think because they speak Hausa, they are largely Nigerians. No, so these people are literally, literally from places as far as far flung, far flung as Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, parts of Senegal, parts of Niger Republic, you know, Chad. And you know what? People don't realize, people watching us this morning don't realize that if, if you take away the 5,000 plus army, 5,000 plus soldiers of the Republic of France, literally holding together, uh, you know, semblances of nations like Mali, in at the top of Nigeria, people don't realize that many of those countries will not be in existence. Even the, their situation will be worse than Somalia. So you have youngsters, young and and people may not know that between Niger Republic and Mali, between Mali and Niger Republic, the highest rate of procreativity is registered on the first of the year where an average woman gives birth to about nine to 11 children. And all these kids would have to grow. Growing is a inevitability. Would have to grow in a state of chaos, instability, and the only, the only part of call to stability they have is not only Nigeria. It used to be Northern Nigeria, like Kano, Sakwato, uh, uh, Niger State, uh, parts of Bono, but as we speak now, Sakwato is literally, you know, northwest of Nigeria. Am I only saying Sokoto alone? Uh, I'm saying Sokoto, Katsina, Zamfara. They have their own security situation. You want to go to central, north central, you, want, you are looking at the situation in Niger State. You are looking at situation in um, uh, in, in, in many in, in Benue State. You are looking at situation in Taraba. You are looking at situation in, in, in Plateau. You want to go. So you're, to, so to you're simply West. saying so nobody Kaduna, is safe. Kaduna is in Kaduna, that is supposed to be the security capital of Nigeria, is bleeding big now, and you want to go eastward like that. So I'm I'm sitting here thinking that your question does not only speak to the situation of IDPs. The last question that the lady asked me does not only speak to the situation of IDPs, but it speaks to the fact that those of us who are in cities like Lagos, like cities like Potako, cities like Kabe Okuta Ibadan, we must wake up to smell the coffee that the situation now is such that the enemies are within. If they were to be Nigerians, it would be better. These are people that are coming from as much as 1,500 kilometers away from the top of Nigeria. All right, Mr. Agbalaba, I, I, I want us to uh, speak of any possible solutions. It's, a, it's, a, it's, not a, it's, it's a really terrible picture like you've painted this morning. The giant of Africa, as we've been called for many, many years, doesn't you know, seem that way anymore. And if we had these thousands, look around Lagos, thousands of undocumented persons riding Okadas, walking around, we're hearing of thousands more being displaced in Niger State and in other um, parts of northern Nigeria. What are the possible solutions um, that can exist uh, to save Nigeria from complete implosion? One of the solutions, to be honest with you, is that states like Lagos, states like Lagos, Ogun, Oyo, Oshun, 
states like Kwara, states uh, like Sokoto, states like Zamfara must find a way of intensifying the effort to have bona fide residents well registered. Mm. <laughs> you know, it may seem uh, it may seem somewhat utopic, but until we know those who are bona fide residents from opportunistic residents, and I have lived abroad before, and I tell Nigerians who tend to want to complain that even when some of us were living in the diaspora, in places like Germany, in places like United Kingdom, even when we were living there, the mentality of the immigrant, the mentality of the immigrant was such that between 50 to 60 percent of the population of Nigerians in those, in those countries there, they couldn't care, they only wanted to make money, and they were wreaking havoc on those societies. The first thing you want to understand when you are dealing with a large <laughs> body of immigrants is that majority, is, it, there is even a phenomenon for it in, in, in the concept of urbanization. It is called the capital city syndrome. People who are born in the place, you wouldn't want the place, you wouldn't grow up to want the place to burn because you were born and raised and you have cultural ability with the place. Those who come in, come in specifically to make money, they don't care whatever happens. And you are game, all of you who have a degree of emotional attachment to want to preserve civilization in that place, you are game for them. Until we come to that realization, that this is not this is not discrimination, this is not uh, tribalism, this is not uh, wanting to be sectional. It is just preserving the sanctity of peace in your community, and we use that to engage those who are ready to be productive. You must realize that majority of these characters do the things that an average negotiation will refuse to do. You know, they are they preponderate or cadre because you know those are those are hanging fruit opportunities, commercial opportunities for, for many of them who want who want to be to be civil and law abiding. They do they do they draw water for you because you don't have uh, you know you don't have a, a, a public uh, pipe on water system that functions. Uh, some of them, some of us are in construction. Social housing, the kind of social housing I'm providing would not have, have been possible without the kind of labor you see some of them do at a reduced rate, although affecting the degree of what bona fide indigenous can earn. Right. But there are so many percentage of them ready to throw anything and everything out of the scene just to make money and go back to where they're coming from to go and show that well, they made it when they went to Lagos. Well, well, uh, 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 the 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 um, you know a, a pe the picture you've painted this morning once again you know doesn't look very good, regardless of what part of the country that you're in. And I always refer to Lagos because that's where we're um, um, uh, we are this morning. And I would always remind Le uh, Lagosians to look around you, look around you know the streets on your way to work, traffic. You know, like you've mentioned, all the Okada riders it doesn't look very good. But I want us to go back to talking about one of the things that made the headlines this morning, and that is the um, Boko Haram um, hoisting flags in about 50 locations in uh, 50 communities in uh, Niger State. There's also been mention of uh, Shiroro. Um, these, I believe, are one of the reasons why we have an increasing number of IDPs um, across Nigeria. Um, what is your um, response to that and your reaction to that? If you remember, in the 24, just before the 2014 elections, <laughs> uh -huh. uh, before this administration c uh, came into um, um, power, that was one of the things that was mentioned, that Boko Haram had control of many local government areas in northern Nigeria. Are we back there? We are back there from the report that we had from the governor of Niger State. But we are not only back there because, come to think of it, in in the 
past, when it happened, it was largely in the northeastern part of Nigeria, parts of Adamawa, parts of uh, Adamawa, Yobe, Bono, uh, and in those days, in those days, those, the, their ugly flags were, were literally flying across uh, swaths of our territory and many local government administrative headquarters. Uh, but unfortunately now, and we must say, we must say to put history in proper perspective, that when Dr. Goodluck Ebele Jonathan, who I did not support them, who I campaigned against them, when he postponed, when he got the election postponed for six weeks, and you know, during that six weeks, when he equipped the Nigerian, the heroes of the Nigerian state, you know, the Nigerian army, when he equipped them, source of those territories were taken back from Boko Haram, even before Pres uh, President Jonathan then lost the election. Now, the unfortunate part of the situation now is that Bono is part of Bono and Yobe are literally now being, being taken, irrespective of the courage of character of our soldiers. But because they've been under welfare and under, under a key, you know, the Achilles heels have, have been made open in the north, in some parts of the northeast. And as we speak now, another plan has been opened by Boko Haram that is indeed, as we speak, those watching us in Abuja must wake up to reality and smell the coffee. Less than two hours away from, or less than two to three hours away from Abuja, the federal capital territory. You know what? The truth, as we speak now, is that Nigeria is in a state of civil war light in those places. And unfortunately, our commander in chief is asleep. He is sleeping. No excuses about it. Wonderful human being. His heart is good for this country. But you know what? Look, I tell people. Naira for Naira, dollar for dollar. If you want to measure what Buhari has done in infrastructure relative to any other government since 1999, you must celebrate Buhari. Dollar for history, history for history. Since the colonizers, since the colonialists did the rail line from Lagos to the interland of Nigeria in 1909, no other government has done what the Buhari government has done. Right, but Mr. if you've Mr. done all these things, and I don't have security, and if you've done all these things, and some people can flood in from outside Nigeria, and literally vandalize it in moments. Look at what happened in last year yesterday. M Mr. Bolaoba, um, Mr. Bolaoba, apologies to Boston. Mr. Bolaoba, um, we really have talked about, you know, the situation that happened, you know, in Lasso. But quickly wrapping up our conversation about, you know, the IDP situation in Nigeria, insecurity. We know that the federal government had said that they had plans to resettle all IDPs, you know, in IDP camps by May 2021. I mean, it's to be May in just a few days, by Saturday to be the 1st of May. But we're now hearing cases about lots of Nigerians leaving Yobe State, leaving Nigeria State, you know, in trucks, basically going God knows where. But we don't have a system as a stands where, in situations like this, where Nigerians are aware that this is where you can go and register. This is the plan that the government has for you. In cases like this, this is where you need to go and get shelter. What is even the state of our ID camps? Poor hygiene, you know, in inadequate you know food inadequate shelter inadequate security you know things like there's just so much so what really should be the focus of the government or should we tackle this at the same time regarding regarding resettlement yes regarding resettling these idps and you know countering you know terrorism that's the root cause of the issue you see without wanting to sound Jeremiah Carl this morning I would not want him to be a doomsday analyst uh, or, or, or a portrait of the gloom. I really have to let Nigerians know that we don't, in, in many areas of our life, we just live by the moment. 
Uh, you are talking about IDPs. Uh, majority of those who happen to be IDPs are those who are in states where afflictions uh, can, when they are running away from afflictions, they will still run to some parts of Nigeria, states like Benue, Taraba, Plateau. In the state of the president himself, Katsina, it is reported without being without being said. It has been incessantly and consistently reported without being said that people now in about four local government areas of Katsina State now go to rent houses to sleep in the J Republic. They sleep in the J Republic and come to do business in Nigeria during the day. So nocturnally, they, they think their safety is more pronounced in the Jail Republic in the night for them to sleep as nocturnal residents. Of, but down at the, during the day, they come to do business in the, That is in the state of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And we know that there are instances of people in Zamfara what am I talking about? Why am I going that far? In Ogun State, in parts of Yewa in Ogun State, people have now run out of Nigeria to go and seek refugee status in Bene Republic. <laughs> oh, it's sad. But you know, uh, like the Yorubas will say, sometimes you say something sad, but you can't but laugh. All right. People in Ogun State, past of Ogun State, Nigeria, in Ogun West Senatorial District, run to Benin Republic to go and take refuge for safety of their lives. So I'm talking to you now, and I'm thinking which institution, which agency captures that well? If it was not for Punch newspapers that sent correspondents or sent reporters to go and cover the activities of Nigerians who are now living or basically scavenging life as refugees in, in Benin Republic. Would you have ever believed that Nigerians could be so displaced? Right. Indeed, Mr. Mr. Bolova. We actually had, uh, you know, representatives of the community, you know, speak to us, you know, here on The Breakfast, you know, around that time when that news broke. So indeed, it's, it's a long-running issue. We do hope the government can indeed find a solution, you know, to this problem of internally displaced persons and to the, you know, root cause of terrorism and insecurity. Thank you very much for your time and thoughts on The Breakfast, Mr. Bolawa. Have a great day. Always a pleasure to be on your set. Thank Thanks you for, for joining us. Once again. All right. Good morning once again. If you're just joining us, uh, we've had very, very in well, um, interesting and uh, important conversations this morning, mostly talking security. Uh, we're still going to be talking, you know, security next. Uh, uh, the focus is on the Greenfield students uh, uh, that are currently in captivity. Five of them have been reportedly killed. Uh, what next? And, uh, you know, um, what must the Nigerian government do and the Kaduna State government do to ensure that these uh, children return home to their families safe? Uh, we're going to be speaking with the former DSS director, uh, Dennis Amakri, next.